Welcome to the Vigor Life Podcast, a source of inspiration, lessons, stories, skill sets, mindsets, and strategies to invigorate and expand all areas of your life. Let's go. What's going on? Luca back here with the Vigor Life Podcast, and it's just me by my lonely self. But check this out. Uh, today, I wanted to talk uh, about something that uh, that really hit me hard, and it was uh, from a buddy of mine actually made this comment, and, and it kind of brought it to light, but it's it's about choosing your can'ts, okay? Choosing your can't. Now, what do I mean by about that? Like, is every single day or just in our lives on a consistent basis, we have a choice on what we can't do, right? Now, look, you know, we're at Vigor Ground, obviously. We're in, the, we're in the business of helping people transform inside and out. I'm not going to go d- deep into what that means here for us. But what I will say is that, you know, for instance, when you can't get up in the morning, notice how I said can't. Right. Ah, I just I just can't get up in the morning to get my workout in. That's what that's the can't that you choose. Right. Whereas the choice may be. I can't keep living like this and feeling like this and having no energy to be able to play with the kids. And after I come home from work now, which can't is more powerful. Right. That's really the choice that you have to make. And, and the thing is, this is just one 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 example, because there's numbers and numbers of examples but it's like, what do you catch yourself saying, right? Can't confirms it. Can't can't creates a a essentially a self fulfilling prophecy. Question is just which one are you going to create, right? It's, it's so easy to go like, ah, I just can't get up in the morning. That's that's a story, right? That's a story. Now, does that story serve you? No. I'm gonna keep coming back to this. I always it's my favorite question. To ask is like, does that serve you? I was just, I just had a, a podcast, me and Gene shot, and we we talked about like, hey, you know, whatever it is your belief is, right? Does your th- does that belief serve what you want to achieve? Now, if that's, uh, you know, getting in the best shape of your life, uh, getting rip of uh, rid of hip pain or back pain, or rehabbing your shoulder, or getting lean, or getting back to your college playing days, or uh, being able to play with the kids getting rid of diabetes, whatever it is, right? Is your belief serving that result? It's usually a very simple, like very simple answer to that one, right? If you put a, if you put it down and if it's not, you got to change that story, right? Because the thing is, remember the beliefs are pretty much just thoughts that turn into stories that are being repeated long enough to where it just becomes a belief. And, uh, I can't even I I can't even uh, remember where I was reading this, but it was it was a it was a husband and wife, and they were they were pretty much pissed. Like the the husband was always pissed off because the wife would make the turkey for Thanksgiving with no legs, and it was just like why like why do you make the turkey with no legs? Like it looks weird. Like it's it, it's like there's there's flavor in the legs. Like I I just don't understand it. And the wife was like, well, like that's how my family's been making it all this time, right? It's been like. This is just, that's how my mom used to make it. And so that's how I make it. So the husband just couldn't like, let go. He he was just like, I gotta, I gotta get to the bottom of this. Like, I gotta get to the bottom of this. This is, this is like bugging me so much. So he called uh, his wife's mom and he's like, listen, I gotta ask you a question. Like, why do you make the turkey without the legs? Like, what's the deal? Like, it it, it doesn't taste better. It's not better. It looks weird. Like, it's not the traditional turkey. And the mom was like, well, uh, or should I say his, his wife's mom was like, well, you know, it's, it's our family tradition. It's like how my grandma, uh, or should I say how my mother, uh, used to make it and your, and your wife's grandma used to make it, you know, the, the, the guy is just not, he's, he's, he's not, uh, he's not happy with that answer. Obviously it, it's the same, it's the same answer he got. Like, well, it's not a good enough answer. Like that there's no true reason for it. And he decides to call the grandma and goes like, listen, I, I got to get to the bottom of this. Like, you know, they keep saying it's a family tradition to take, you know, to, to, to cook the bird without the legs. I don't know what the deal is. Can you explain to me? Can you give me the reason why that is? And the grandma says, well, yeah, like, you know, back then our oven was so small that like the only way we could cook the bird was to take the legs off. Now, why do I say that? I, why do I why do I bring this story up? One, it popped up in my mind as I was bringing this up. But the other reason why is because we do things, right? We do things, and sometimes we don't even know why. It was just something that was passed down, like our beliefs are passed down. 
but they don't they don't serve us. They're they come from all types of different places, but it's not like they're the truth. And that was a perfect example. Where it's like it's just how it all it's always been done. And you know, many times it's just like, well, that's just how I've always thought. That's just what I was always told. Because you don't inquire, right? You don't inquire about the things that you do and how you do them. And so many times your can'ts are just your beliefs is just how it's always been. Like, you know, well, we, we, you know, we just can't genetically, we just can't lose weight. You know, we, we just, we just never been good at, you know, running businesses or making money or whatever it may be. And that's your can't rather than going, I can't stay like this. I want more for my kids. I want more for my family. I want to be able to take them here. I want to be able to get this right. Or I want to be able to go back on a basketball court and play and dunk and whatever it is, I cannot stay this way. So you choose your can't. But when you're doing that, first make sure that you inquire about why those can'ts are in place in the first place anyways. Now, number one is awareness. Remember, I always talk about this one. Start catching yourself. Start catching yourself when you say it. Anytime you say, I can't. And then write it down. And then next to it, find a more powerful I can't that serves you. For this, for the rest of this week, whenever you catch yourself saying I can't, and it become and you become aware, right? Write it down on one side of the other paper. And on the other side, find an I can't that serves you more. Right? Just just that. That serves the things that you want to achieve more. So if that is getting leaner, uh, getting rid of getting getting rid of aches and pains, or seeing your kids more, or uh, saving more money, whatever it is, right? Find an I can't that serves you more. I'm going to pause there for a second. I'm just going to pause there for a second. Right now, I'm going to connect this to uh, another thing that we were talking about as far as how we work when it comes to behavior change. All right. And there's there's really four boxes. We're four boxes that uh, we that we go from. And, and number one is unconscious incompetence. Okay. So all that means is we don't know, right? We don't even consciously know the things that we're doing that are not helping us. Right. So we're not competent in something that would, would help us change. Right. But we don't know it because we're unconscious. So that's box one. So from box one, we move to conscious incompetence. That's when we become aware. And that's why I'm saying, Hey, catching your, I can't, right? Conscious incompetence is like, oh shit, I do this stuff and like, it's not helping me, but you, you've become aware at it, right? Conscious competence is the next box that we'd move into. And conscious competence is where we start having to change those things, but you have to be really, like, you have to really think about it. It's hard. It's hard changing those habits. And that's what I was just talking about. Catch your I can'ts and then change them to something that serves you more. So that's conscious competence, right? You start working on improving, right? You start working on like, what can I do to get there? Not what I can't I do. And you create a, a different I can't, right? And then the last level is unconscious competence. That just means that like, now you've created a habit that serves you and you've done it so much that pretty much it's like it's unconscious. Now, what for me that is, for instance, is training or eating certain types of, uh, eating a certain way to stay healthy, right? I've done it long enough to where, uh, you know, when, I'm, when I was in uh, going to, to Necker Island, I'm like, I'm doing hill sprints, right? I'm doing hill sprints in the morning. I'm doing body weight circuits. There is no gym. I have to walk 30, 40 minutes. But it's like, it's almost just a part of who I am. I don't even have to really think about it. That's just what's getting done or picking different foods that like to serve my body to feel a certain way, to look a certain way. Right now, I also have shitty habits in certain ways, which is overworking, which is when I'm stressed, I, I, I overwork, I don't take enough time for myself, so on and so forth. So I'm going through those four from going from unconscious incompetence to unconscious competence, like going through that, those boxes in certain other areas, right? Or organization or whatever it may be. But it starts with becoming aware. 
and becoming aware of like, what are the things that I say? I might say them out loud or I might say them in my head. What can I do? And then stopping myself and going like, okay, is that serving me? Okay, change my I can't. I can't get up in the morning earlier and go do some sprints at the track. Oh, I, you know, I can't get up in the morning and do 20 minutes of meditation. Whereas it's, I'd rather replace it with, I can't get up again and have my mind be all over the place and be anxious the, the, the whole day and not get as much done as I could. And then get up and do a meditation. Right. But it starts with that conscious awareness and changing your I can'ts. And I promise if you start putting these things down so they're right in front of you, so they become real, you're going to become more aware of it. And then you start changing it little by little. It's not like this magical, like, hey, in four days, I changed my life. No, it's work. It's a skill set. Like all of these things are a skill set because you're training your brain, one, to to first find issues or find problems that that are stopping you from going to where you go, want to go. And then step two is to be consciously aware to work on them the whole time. And improve them, right? Just like anything else, you you get a new drill. At the beginning, you're not that good at it, right? If you get pissed off and just don't do it anymore, you're not going to get it at all. But if you keep working on it day by day by day by day, 30 days in, 45 days in, all of a sudden, you're much better at it. 90 days in, maybe you're you know, very good at it. After a year, you're master at it, whatever it may be. But it's like, what do you want to improve on? And I, I would have you consider that a big part of of, of, of change is obviously disciplining yourself in the little actions that you take every day to, to change your mind. Right. And to obviously change your body because they both are, they're a two way street. So choose your, I can'ts, become aware and then decide which one's going to serve you. I'm Luke Holsvar and I'm out. See you in the next episode of Vigor Life Podcast. Peace out.